Well, Standard Chartered Bank has just launched its sustainability impact report. And we'll be discussing this with the CEO, Mr. Kariu Kingari, on what this means for green financing in Kenya and beyond. Join us for that conversation, but first, let's take a look at his profile. Kariuki is an accomplished career banker with over 23 years of retail banking experience. He earned his recognition through successfully transforming the consumer banking divisions of Standard Chartered Bank Kenya and Standard Chartered Regional Africa. A seasonal financial professional, he has held various senior leadership roles across the industry. Prior to his current role, he was the global head retail distribution for Standard Chartered Bank in Singapore. There, he was instrumental in formulating global strategies in building the future of retail branch and voice and virtual landscapes through digitization of the physical channels and revision of branch models and standards. Prior to his global role, Karyuki was the regional head of Retail Clients Africa between 2013 and 2015 and the executive director Kenya and East Africa from 2009 to 2013. He has also held senior positions in Barclays Bank of Kenya Limited. Welcome to another exciting edition of The Trading Bell. Today we have a special focus on matters dealing with sustainability in businesses. And we are joined by the Managing Director for Standard Chartered Bank Kenya. This is none other than Kariu Kingare. Many thanks for making time for us on the show. Thank you. Well, many organizations are transitioning towards sustainability impact reporting. Perhaps let's begin by demystifying what is all this all about and how important is it for companies in this day and age? Thank you. I think the first thing you have to accept is uh, we are living in unprecedented times and very, very challenging times. The way we did business in the past cannot be, if we continue doing business the way we've always done it in the past, we will destroy our planet mm. in terms of uh, when you talk about when you talk about matters of sustainability let's talk about climate change for instance we cannot we know the impact that the climate change the drastic climate change has had on kenya kenya is a living example We're in the month of may for instance yeah. and you can see the rains have failed us uh, if you talk about uh, <clears throat> if we don't do anything about it the global warming is going to cause a very big impact that's one part then you talk about the part of proper governance, what, what are the governance practices that you're employing in terms of the business you run, the operations, is it building or destroying the environment? That is important. So when you talk about sustainability, is, is the realization that companies, whether big or small, can only continue making, can only continue being sustainable, mm -hmm. making profits over the long term, if the environment they're operating is sustainable. Mm -hmm. Hence the importance when you talk about sustainability, that is what you're talking about. And that's why companies today are realizing that is something that you must, you must pivot to that. And when you talk about impact reporting, is to actually be out there to declare to the wider public what you're doing as a company. Mm -hmm. So that you're open to scrutiny and you can have a baseline to continue building on so that you can improve on what you do every day, every year. Otherwise, if you don't have a baseline, if you don't have a measurement, then it just becomes a talking shop. All right. Of course, for many of the viewers right now that are trying to understand what is a bank doing in sustainable impact reporting instead of giving loans and pushing on with life? That's a good question, but yeah. ask yourself, what are the loans for? You have to give loans, first of all, let's talk about if we just cut ourselves, uh, forget about even being part of a much wider ecosystem mm. Uh, mm. as a bank. But if you take a bank like Standard Chartered, yeah. what are we, when we give the loans, the loans are being used for means of production. But what is the means of production being done? A good example is fossil fuels. Let's say like coal, for instance. Coal is very destructive to the environment. So it's very easy for us to continue giving man funding operations that are mining coal, yeah. but look at the damage it's doing to the environment. And mm -hmm. that's why as Standard Chartered, we said we will not be funding any coal-fired plants going forward. So it's very deliberate for us that we know that we are a force for good. Mm -hmm. When we have bail financing, then we have to ensure that the practices, that are, the businesses that we are supporting are, are employing sustainable practices. That's one. Then there's a, the impact, how we can mobilize. When you look at this sphere, when you look at the targets the globally has been put, whether it's net zero, get mm. to net zero by 2050, mm. it requires a huge amount of money in excess yeah. of 4 trillion. 
So how do we mobilize those resources? It requires mobilizing resources from different sectors, different parts of the different parts of groups. So whether it's a private sector itself, whether it's a public sector, whether it's multilateral. So how do we bring all these together? That's another role that we can play. Mm -hmm. And finally, if we don't do this and we destroy the environment, then what business will we be playing? So it's a realization that we have a very big role to play, not only as a bank, but as a responsible citizen because we want to be a responsible company. All right, and uh, let's fast forward this conversation, Mr. Ngari. When you talk about banks and organizations to align themselves towards the uh, UN Sustainable Development Goals, we are in a critical space and time where we're just coming from a pandemic that is not yet clearing off in most of our economies. And on the same end, we are seeing uh, business continuity was a very important uh, pillar uh, for companies during COVID and as we also come to the tail end of COVID. From where you sit, how do the two connect? Sustainability, impact reporting, as well as business continuity. I think if there's anything uh, COVID-19 has taught us, because it's still there, we can't say it's gone. Uh, what COVID-19 has taught us, preparedness, it is very important. If you look at Samia's back, there was a lot of people out there who were talking about a pandemic. They had not been identified what it was, but it was clearly people kept on saying there were scientists out there, people yeah. in the public health sphere, kept on talking about that sooner, rather than la sooner or later, the world is going to face a pandemic. But of course, people didn't prepare or they didn't hear. They chose to say those are naysayers, those are prophets of doom. So people didn't prepare. That is why it is important when you talk about matters climate change to start being prepared. The scientists out there, the people who are very heavily involved in that, studying what is happening to our atmosphere, to our beautiful planet, mm. are telling us we are destroying the planet. And the best example for us is the way we can see global change, the, the climate change that is real. That we can see some areas that used to receive rain very often are no longer receiving rain. Or some areas are receiving excess rainfall. So that tells us, we've been told, if you don't do anything about this, in, in years to come, the, the world, the planet is going to be inhabitable. And that's what is important. So let COVID-19 be a lesson for mankind that when scientists or people are warning about challenges that are coming, yeah. it's important to get prepared. And this is why we are here today as companies. That's why we are talking about what we are doing at Sunday Charter. How do we start making sure that we are prepared? How do we ensure that we carry along our clients and our partners? And how do we come together, whether as corporates or SMEs, so that we move on this journey together. And most important as well is how do we bring in the government? Because the public sector is key. Without right. involvement of the public sector, you cannot make the strides that you need to make. And let's talk about the pool of financing, especially now for green projects, green financing. As a bank, how are the numbers looking? And uh, is there an uptake following that decision by the bank to take to ensure that uh, they keep off um, things that are not aligned towards a, a, green, a green sustainable economy. Yes, we've seen, we've, seen, uh, we've seen a lot of interest, we've seen a lot of interest in terms of uh, the companies coming to us and saying, I want to move away from the current, my, my current operation which is heavily reliant on unsustainable practices, I want to transition. So for me to transition, I require financing. It could be probably they've been using diesel generators and they are saying now I want to put solar panels for my, for my operation. Maybe they've been using a water treatment that is, not, that is not the modern standard and they want to move to that level. So we've seen that. And they, for our role is when they come to us, we say, how can we help you? How can we give you, whether it's a green bond, it could be, it could be a loan, but mm. mainly it could be a green loan or a mm. green bond mm. where somebody wants to launch. And we help them go through the practice because to, for, for any of our facilities to qualify, to be classified as a green bond or a green loan, mm. a certain criteria you must meet. What is the end use for it? The end use is very, very important. What is yeah. it being used for? And is yeah. it really for sustainable practices? Mm. And we've seen that happening. So I would say, yes, the uptick is there. I think in terms of, uh, we spend a lot of time sensitizing what we can do, ensuring the clients are comfortable, and we're having conversations. And you will start seeing this coming. It will become mainstream sooner rather than later. All right. Yeah. And uh, one of the big campaigns in the U.S. sustainability reporting is on accelerating zero, lifting participation, as well as resetting globalization. What opportunities are there for SMEs in all this? 
when, when we look at uh, when, whether it's on accelerating zero or lifting participation or, or resetting globalization, there's big opportunities in there. I'll just give you two, two, about two, three examples. When we launched our carbon data report last year, we said that companies in this part of the world, that is Kenya, because Kenya was part of the study that was taken, the risk was in excess of $3 billion. Because as a global multinationals transition, and quite a number of those multinationals source their raw materials from Kenya, for instance, as they also accelerated their plants, they will expect the same of their suppliers. And a lot of those suppliers are here. It could be the SMEs. So there's a big role to play. So there's an opportunity to see how do you transition, whether it's on terms of solar energy, that is important. Whether it's in terms of gas, whether it's, me, whether it's on biogas, usage of biogas, that's an area that the SMEs can play. When you see this opportunity, when you talk about $4 trillion, that's what is required globally to transition to sustainable practices. That $4 trillion is not going to sit with a few companies. It's going to trickle down to all the economies, whether it's on sustainable farming practices. So all I see are opportunities. These are big, big opportunities in terms of as we transition, when you leave the participation from different diverse groups, especially the marginalized, who are mainly women and youth, that is going to make the big difference. So those opportunities are, is what we as a bank are trying to be very clear about, All so right. that we can partner with SMEs, we can show them what the opportunities are, and we can bring them on board. Because this is a complex subject, but it can be simplified for everybody to understand and for everybody to see the role they can play. President Kenyatta has been on record saying that uh, climate change needs sufficient resource mobilization from a position of climate mitigation. And the COP27 is going to be coming to Africa for the first time in Egypt. And as a bank, how are you leading the talk, especially when it comes to sharing your personal experiences as an organization with other institutions that we've seen a few companies taking that path EABL, Safaricom, now we have started Chartered. Uh, what's your message? The message is that this is something that we have to do together, partnerships. Uh, whether it's on the public, from the, we, we need input from the public sector. There's definitely regulations that need to be changed or new policies that need to become on board. For instance, how do you make, for instance, think about a simple example is solar. How do you make solar affordable to thousands of households? How do you ensure that people can be able to transition? Because businesses, it costs money. So how do you help them transition? So that's in terms of the public, public space. The private sector as well. How, what can they contribute in terms of financing? Some of it will be outright donations, yeah. but most of it has to be facilities as well, loans mm. that are sustainable. That's important. Then some of it is going to be multilateral, where the large organizations of this world can be able to contribute. So it's bringing all those key players together. So when we see the journey that Kenya has started, and Kenya has made a lot of strides because we are talking about it, there's engagement about it, it's a question of now how do we, how do we tie in all this so that everybody, the corporates, the SMEs, the clients and the individuals are all brought together so that we can make, so we can make progress. Indeed, a lot of work still cut out for us indeed. Yes. Thank you so much yes. Mr. Karaoke Gary. Thank you very time. much. Thank well, you. we've been speaking there to the MD for Stanchard Kenya. Kario Kingari, giving us his perspectives around climate change and some of the opportunities that exist for businesses here in the country. Well, that brings us to a close on today's edition of The Trading Bell. I now leave you with a quick look at the financial markets. Hello and welcome to Market Analysis. I'm Noakip Kimbo and today I'm joined by Melody Dan Gatuguta from Genghis Capital and she's an equity analyst. Welcome to the show, Melody. Thank you for having me. Wow, so uh, quite an interesting week we've had in regards to some of the movements we're seeing across the counters uh, are the energy and the securities. So starting with top gainers. Um, Samir Africa, Flem Tree, uh, Transcentury, uh, Standard Group, uh, East Africa Portland Cement, and normally these uh, 
account is that you know I don't see them at the top gainers most of the times so what's happening so I believe um, because of counters like Safaricom, uh, Equity, KCB, because the foreigners have been selling off, so they've been selling it at a lower price. So that's why you see now these smaller cap uh, counters, the volumes now uh, are becoming more prevalent in the market. So most of the small retail traders who are just taking opportunities, arbitrage opportunities, because you can't really say that there's anything market moving happening in those counters. And in regards to the issue of foreign players vis-a-vis, -vis, you know, local investors, uh, is there a leaning towards, uh, I mean, local investors investing more in small caps compared to foreign investors taking on the big boys? Um, you'd say that uh, mainly these foreign investors are attracted to the blue chip uh, large counters. That's the KCB, as I said, KCB, uh, Equity, EABL. Mm -hmm. So it's not, it's not necessarily that the small, the retail clients are focused on the small ones. It's just that the foreign participants, uh, they garner a larger percentage of uh, participation in the market. So whenever you see any market activity by these foreigners, it has an effect on the counters as a whole. So now like the Safaricom, we've seen that it's touched uh, new lows, mainly because of the interest rate hikes we've been seeing in the developed markets. We saw the US, it had one of the highest uh, rate hikes in I think the past 10 years, mainly because of the inflation that's uh, been going up in the market as well. So even England as well, Switzerland, these developed countries are raising their b benchmark rates. So in that regard, they are seen as a more attractive market uh, when you adjust it for the risk return. Mm -hmm. Markets like Kenya are seen as perceived as more risky. So if you see that rates are going up in these other markets, it's better for you to realign your, po your portfolio and go back to markets such as the US. So what does that say? and not meaning to be prophetic per se, <laughs> but in, in terms of, of, of the medium term and long term outlook for our markets, if this foreigners are pulling out, mm -hmm. uh, what will reverse that trend because they're the major players uh, in the market? Well, unfortunately, um, unless market fundamentals uh, change in our market and also in theirs, unless inflation um, is brought to a manageable level, unfortunately, we might continue seeing uh, outflows in the market. But local investors can take this as an opportunity to get into these positions at a discounted uh, rate. Let's say uh, counters like Safaricom, it had gone up to highs of 40 plus and now it's uh, at around 20, 24 thereabout. So if an investor wanted to come into this position, they can come in now and they can hopefully get some capital appreciation. Generally, investors should look at companies that are going to be able to ride out this storm. You see, we have elections coming up. We have the Russia-Ukraine war that's been affecting all the markets, the rate hikes. So you look for a product that uh, is going to be used whether or not I'm sorry to say this, people have money. Like if you have to use your phone, you, like Safaricom, you're more or less assured that their revenues are going to continue. Offices need their internet, so Safaricom as well, it's a revenue line. So come, people should just look for these counters that will be able to survive this storm. Mm -hmm. And hopefully, as things get better in time, there's the aspect of capital appreciation. And I know you've mentioned the issue of blue chip. And looking at our markets, I mean, four or five counties are controlling <laughs> 70 to 80 percent of the market. Yes. Is that all, does that also put us at a riskier position as a market overall? Uh, I would say so, yes, because there is that concentration risk. Uh, because now you've seen like these counters like EABL, with the share prices going down, it also brings down the indices. We've seen that the indices have been going down uh, week on week mainly because of this uh, price depreciation of these counters. So if one or this basket of uh, counters goes down, the whole market is dragged down with it. Oh, quite risky. Uh, top losers. <laughs> uh, Nation Media Group, Express Kenya, uh, Logistics uh, People. <laughs> we have Car in General, mm -hmm. uh, Manufacturing, so Cars. Mm -hmm. Limuri tea also is there. I love my tea, by the way. 
so when I see them at top losers, I'm, I'm a little bit concerned, starting mm -hmm. in Nation Media Group. Why yes. so? Uh, so Nation Media Group, they had the book closure for their dividend uh, last week, so that could be one of the aspects of why the share price has gone down. Uh, for car in general, it's generally had a good year after it uh, announced its results, and it also had a bonus share and a dividend. Uh, recently, it had announced uh, it had it had launched a new line of motorcycles. That was about three weeks ago. So you could say that now investors have already priced in that news uh, in the price. So maybe you could see that's why it's uh, gone down a bit. Right. For Limuruti, there was a report that uh, there is a court case that uh, wants to suspend the sale of the 52% stake by Unilever to a private equity fund. So you could say maybe investors are pricing in that news as well. All For right. the other counters, mainly they've been in loss-making territory. So you could say that investors are still not um, quite moved by them. All right. And, and still you only mentioned the indices. Yes. Uh, all of them tanking on the red. Yes. And overall, as you've put it, uh, it's, it's the major players, foreign investors, mm. pulling out of the market. Yes. Okay. Um, top movers, yes. I mean, still stands. Uh, Safari Corp Safari. expected to be there, 15.7 mm. uh, million in terms of volumes. Uh, KPLC 3.319. You know, people see KPLC there and they are looking at their power <laughs> interests. Uh, why, why is KPLC featuring amongst the top movers? Uh, in my opinion, I believe mainly it's because of the free floats. They have a rather large amount of free floats. So investors take advantage of the small price movements that um, can be envisioned in that, in that stock. So people just take, as I said, arbitrage uh, opportunities. If it moves up and you have like a million shares, you can make quite a subs substantial amount of money. Mm -hmm. yeah. So mainly there's nothing per se um, that market moving um, strategy that KPLC has put in place. All right, definitely. So uh, the rest, equity, ABL, KCB, yeah. Always expected to be there at the top counters yes, yes. in the you know in the Bosch. But secondary market, you wanted to mention something about the secondary market. What's yes. happening there? Um, so we had had the infrastructure bond uh, auction uh, the think two weeks ago, and now the the bond was listed. Uh, it started trading last week, so we saw quite an, an amount of activity. And mainly that was because of investors positioning themselves now to get into the paper, those who were rejected, uh, because it had envisaged some very aggressive bidding. And its rate is quite high, I think about 13.7%, which is the highest in the series. Mm -hmm. So, and that's tax free. So people are positioning themselves to get into this paper at an attractive rate. Well, Melody, Danu, uh, got to Guta. You say your second name is quite difficult, but I've cracked it. Thank you very <laughs> Thank much. Thank you. Uh, Melody, from, who is an equity analyst from Genghis Capital, giving us the latest on matters market analysis. And that's it. I'm Rocky Kimboy. Enjoy your evening.